Oh, there she is. All right. You're so good at remembering the record button now. I am remembering it. Yes. It's, I actually started this one just before you climbed on, too. So, yay. Yay. <laughs> I think it's because I'm so happy that we're we're chatting again. I missed you so much. It was just like a part I of me. I really wanted to like do videos, but so I kept getting that I just had to kind of hold space almost for you. And I was like, okay, just bite your tongue. Just bite your tongue. Just bite your tongue. It was so hard. But, but now, now it's like, yeah, now we can do it again. I'm so excited. Oh, man. Yeah, because honestly, in the other recordings that we did, like I had text you that you really kept me going because I would make these videos when I didn't want to, but I knew it was the best thing. Like I knew my energy would be elevated and I knew that when we finished, I was going to have something versus nothing. Like to me doing nothing and I know we all have to do nothing. And that's been burned in my head by Ingrid. Like sometimes doing nothing is absolutely mandatory. But during all of that uncertainty, I was just like, I have to do at least one thing. So you were keeping me going during like the worst parts of knowing that my other life was just collapsing, you know, I'm like, so they served its its purpose, but now I think we can have more fun and, and we can do more things and teach more and heal more and whatever, you know? Me too. You know, I always thought like, um, it was so interesting because I used to ask myself, like, what is the point where I felt like everything has collapsed, you know? And I was like, oh, I think it's already happened. But I know now, like, we're just getting there and we're just about to get over the hump. And I'm like, it's so interesting. When they mean everything falls apart, they mean everything. And I was like, they don't, nobody really tells you, like, when you really start this journey, like you, it's not just losing yourself, being completely torn down and torn apart and dissected and then healed. And it's, it's really like you're, if you want to be in that state of um, acceptance and higher self, mm -hmm. it really, you like, you have to hit the floor hard and yeah you do and the thing is no matter how many times like I remember being told years ago because I would always my therapy was always through intuitives and healers they weren't fixing me they were patching me up to go back out in battle until I could wake up to myself not wake up to the world stuff but to myself and I knew it was coming I always you know I could anticipate some of these drop downs these events that would just opened me wide up but it wasn't this kind of thing it was just like bits and pieces me of me you know continuing to suffer and then I would not listen to my intuition and I'd have something else happen to me that was like devastating and like then I'd have to go get another reading like help me to just let me hang on for a little longer you know and they'd be so optimistic and because I didn't relate to the human therapist when I did yeah. I'd wind up I'd wind up giving them therapy or in one case I actually had pulled in when I was doing my medium stuff I actually pulled in her husband and I'm like by the way do you know so and so and she's like oh my god that's my you know deceased husband and so we went off on that meanwhile I'm like needing EMDR you know like I need the ta I need you know my system is shot I'm like I can't go on you know it's just one process after another but uh Sorry, I got off on a little tangent there. But yeah, for me, it was like bypassing the human. And now the human has caught up with me. And so I'm just like, ah, deer in the headlights. But it's okay. You know, yeah. it's better. But I don't think there'll be a deer in the headlights for long. No, I think. Ah, <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so um, first, I have to ask for your permission to enter your energetic field. Absolutely. Uh, so I know that this is going to sound super awful, but I know that now is the time for you to do your inner child work. Mm. 
Yeah. 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 And it's not, and I don't feel like it's going to be the things you expect it to be. Really? Yeah. I feel like it's going to have a lot of like, so like incidents happen like boom, boom, boom. But there were these in between incidents that have never you've never acknowledged to yourself wow um like drawing a blank because i there's so many things that happen that like people would say oh you should write a book you know it's like no somebody's circumstances are worse than mine please you know but and i was like, always like downplaying stuff you know like was there like a uncle or uh, somebody that came to stay or watch you when you were young like really young like hmm, like three or four uh yeah like there were, very uh, yeah I mean like um well, I'm just gonna say yeah yeah, I think that there's going to be a lot of work around um, that because that's going to be one of the beginning points. So what you're kind of saying is part of my human process now is going to be um, releasing yeah. those things. Yeah, you're going to be... I definitely... Um, feel like the focus is gonna be this lifetime. Um, the things that you've kind of not really healed, but kind of like patched. Yeah. Like you keep seeing like band aid. Like okay, so for me, these incidents present as like gifts. Okay, yeah. so they're wrapped all nice, but you take the box off. And there's, it, we'll call it an energy ball. And there's a ball, but the ball is covered in band-aids. Like it's been contained in these bandages. So you've never had to face them. Right. You've never had to one-on-one. -on -one, like, you know, they're there. You know what they are. Mm -hmm. But you've never healed them. And all of those things are going to start coming up. And it's gonna, it's gonna like, it's gonna go from like young to like 26. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's gonna be, so those, this is gonna be like a, a list of things you work up. Yeah, 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 yeah that makes yeah. sense. That was the, you know, the, the thick of it, most of my, uh, Let's just say when I didn't have a will of my own and I certainly had no boundaries, that's when the worst offenses, you know, and, and this went back to in, infancy. So what did I know? I didn't know anything, you know, except what was taught to me, what was, you know, right. I had no, no defenses, none. So my decisions were based on not having defenses and if it was the will of someone to do what they wanted then who was I to say no and that's something that right. I've grappled with my entire lifetime because I've made what we call mistakes as a result of that of being weak but it wasn't weak it was I, I couldn't sustain what I didn't know <laughs> I, you know if I didn't know I didn't have the right to protect my boundaries then how you know I mean it's just it was a crapshoot basically so yeah the other thing I, too, yeah go ahead and I feel like these things are um these are like repeats from old lives too that are very like it's repetitive it's like a pat like a pattern like a one one two one one two one one two yeah I mean during the healing they made it a point to spell out that in so many lifetimes it was the same type of thing in fact uh she brought up one lifetime where I was six and uh 
definitely sexually abused and then murdered. Now, I, everybody has a lot of those kind of lifetimes, but it seemed to be a prevalent theme where my innocence and um, well, basically the childhoods, you know, the majority of them were so mangled that I just kept heaping it on the next lifetime and the next and the next. And it just got so heavy. I couldn't do it anymore. Like I couldn't, and, but I have to put on the face. Like I know what I'm doing. I'm living life. I'm, you know, I'm acting the part, but right. that has to collapse. It has to come down, you know, in order to deal with this stuff. So, so I think we're still talking about like now me working on the human stuff, not, I mean, the spiritual stuff had to happen, the soul yeah. stuff, but uh, that was to be the healer because I always knew when I came into this life. And I think that was a big source of confusion too. I knew it was all for a reason. I know it was so that someday I could help somebody get through their stuff, but it was again, bypassing because I said, okay, that's my justification. I'm spiritual. And I know it's for a reason. Um, hello. There's a whole big thing in there because you're not happy. You're not, li you know, you're not, you're not fixing this part, you know, and there's right. a lot of ways that we, um bypass you know like yeah i'll work on i'll do this for this person i'll be there everything i'll help them i'll you know oh you got a life problem here let me help you you know what i mean and though you can help you're still on empty you know you're still giving in a, away what you don't have and others right. don't and really know it yeah and i also i feel like this is going to bring up lessons like lessons and boundaries you setting boundaries for others others setting boundaries for you mm -hmm. and um definitely communication is gonna be a huge huge thing um over especially over like I don't know why but like the next four weeks or so like communication um boundaries all the um, stuff I didn't have, all the stuff that I did not yeah. have, it didn't grow through properly. You know, I used right. to, I, I came to an aha moment. I don't know if it was like a month ago, a couple of weeks ago, whatever, that I realized when I, after my parents died and I did the whole dark night of soul and I did the karmic twin flame thing at the same time, but I didn't know that then, um, I hit the grandiose stage and I was going back to the childhood stages and they say about 18 months to two years is when a little kid will test the parents and like go run out the door and you know uh or leave the house or or you know do some daring move jump off the couch you know something and in that moment they're testing their boundaries they're saying can i do this can i survive this and the parents are like you know oh Oh, you know they but they don't you know if they're a good parent they don't scold the kid they're just like well don't do that again or you know i they we don't teach people the stages of growth we don't teach people the the thing but anyways my point being is that when i joined wrestling after going through the dark night of soul which was incredibly black it was just like incredibly black and i remember like two or uh, some years before maybe five years before i was watching elizabeth gilbert on um oprah and she was talking about someday you'll face a door and i'll be like you and the door is your destiny and you can stand in front of that door and you don't have to open it but you'll die a slow painful death if you do not open it and i said that's me that's i'm so afraid to go through that door even though i know it's good on the other side and then that was what the dark night of soul for me was all about was like cutting the cords with my parents, cutting all of the brainwashing, all of the stuff that I thought I was as a kid, worthless, you know, this, that, and the other thing, um, subservient to anyone, you know, all of that stuff, just sexual. I'm just here for the sex. I'm just here to be, you know, usurped and, and used and abused or whatnot. All of that had to go. And so when I joined wrestling, I was like, yes, I am my own hero. I can do this. And it was the best experience of my life. And I, I love it. I miss, I, if I was able to do it in my twenties, I would have absolutely done it in my twenties. I didn't like it growing up. I thought it was like, you know, barbaric or something. Like, why do people have to, you know, behave that way? But then I found a need for it when it was like time for me to feel that grandioseness that I didn't have as a child. I never had that moment where I could say, I can do this. Never. 
So it was like, whoa, at like 52, I'm going through the two-year-old stage, you know? Wow. <laughs> so and then I, I, yeah, go ahead. I have a question for you. So thinking about that door now, have you walked through it yet? Um, oh, I've definitely, uh, after the healings, I, I, I have like opened it. And I'm just kind of standing there, like with the light on me, kind of going, wow, this feels a whole lot better than when the door wasn't open. But I'm still in that pondering stage, in that stage of now what? I keep hearing those words like, now what? I'm not in perpetual fear anymore, which is the good thing. I know that I still have to worry about money and I still have to worry about some of those things, but they're not attacking me the way that they were. They're not, you yeah. know, permeating my my adrenal system and my whole uh neurological system to where I would sabotage myself all the time, you know? Um so yeah, but I, I still don't know what I'm supposed to be doing in a sense. I do, but I don't. I think I'm afraid to say what I want to do. Or maybe I don't even know. I don't know. Kind of so what do you want to do? I feel like I have to ask these questions today. So, I, you know, I had said a long time ago that I felt like pieces of me were missing because when I go through my own old journals, I'm like, who wrote that? Oh my God. I was in touch with my higher self much more often back then in between these bouts of whatever. I don't know how to say it. It's been like this, like constantly like this until I'd reach moments where I just was like, just stop, leave me alone. I can't do this, you know? But I look in my old journals and I'm just like, wow, where did that innate wisdom come from, right? So I feel like I've always supposed to have been, and I've heard this from other intuitives, the journey that I've walked, somehow that'll come to me in some nice, neat little package or something, you know, whatever is in here. And I will begin to help people in that way publicly. This is why I've been, I was told in 2015, show. And I was, I was when I was in the shower, I had been caring for my father and it was the most impossible task. And I just fell apart in the shower. I was bawling my brains out and then I heard show. And that only two times in my lifetime did I hear that voice. I won't say what it is because I don't know. Could have been higher self, could have been whoever. And so when I heard show, it was like, oh no. And I meant at that time, literally I had a friend uh, Barb, who actually had a show in the 80s called Barb and Friends. I'm like, what? She was a fellow realtor with me. And so she took me to Cox and she's like, oh, here's. And as soon as I saw the studio, I'm like, nope, nope, not doing that. Oh, no, 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 no. Because I was in a different place in my life. When I was in my 20s and I did modeling, that was fine because I was in my 20s. Right. And now at 2015, I was, you know, in bad shape in bad shape physically. I still was in the full throes of my thyroid issues. My weight was at as high as I didn't feel good. I wasn't healthy. And I'm looking at the studio going, no, <laughs> you know, like this is not going to happen this way. Then little by little, I, I built a studio after my father passed. I built a studio in his house and I had my two chairs and my logo and all that stuff. But then I was like, I don't know how to reach out to people. I don't know how to get guests on my show because I've been such a recluse for so long. I don't know how to reach out to people like in my head. I see it, but then actually, you know, opening my mouth to take that first step, like a couple of people I did mention it to a couple of um, one was an astrologer. She does some amazing things um, with the Connecticut astrology group. She's like, yeah, you know, and she started a little show, a little cable show or whatever. And I'm just like, oh, man, everybody's doing it around me. But I couldn't reach out. I couldn't. So it was like. Last ditch effort, I'm listening to my guides and it's like, OK, YouTube, somehow I got to face myself on this forum and it's got to grow from there. But it was supposed to be at first in my little mind was like, oh, I'm going to interview all these people that have spiritual practices, different modalities. Because many years before, after I learned I had a hole in my aura, I was like, no, 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 I had a reading. And and then I was told, I remember hearing my higher self say, go research different modalities, like palm tree and numerology, you know, all that stuff. So I was buying used books on it, but, but that's where it stayed. 
And then when the show concept came up, when I heard show and one of my worst moments again, it was like, oh, so I'm going to interview people who have different modalities and that's how I'm going to contribute to the world. Only I think it was meant to be much deeper than that <laughs> because so, I would be healing through it, you know? Sorry, I'm hearing. So how would you feel maybe if we like, or you, you, um, maybe ask your higher self, what is your first step? Like together right now with me I don't know why but um can okay so can I have you get comfortable mm -hmm. yeah I think I can and I just want you to close your eyes and um we're gonna go we'll go to my my garden I'm going to take you to my garden. Okay. And um, mm -hmm. and I just want you to ask. I think you'll see a lot of fae there. So I feel like maybe our fairy queen might be a good person. So I just want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath in and hold and release slowly. And one more time, deep breath in, hold, and release slowly. And in your mind, I want you to just picture a beautiful gold, violet, white light. And when you see that light, a golden door will start to appear. And when you're ready, go ahead and approach that door. Open it, begin to walk through. Notice the sounds, the smell, the colors, and just keep walking and looking all around. And as you walk deeper into this beautiful garden full of vibrant colors, bright pinks, golds, blues, greens, and purples, you see a rock covered in moss. And on that rock, there's a beautiful, colorful being waiting for you. And once you've gotten close enough to interact with them, Ask their name. And when they've given you your name and their name, you can ask them any questions that you need answers to. Guidance. Whatever feelings come up, let them go. Any thoughts, any negativity, just let it go. And take a deep breath in. Good. And release slowly. And when you're ready, out loud, with conviction, ask your question to this being. Oh. 
what is it am I supposed to be doing? Oh. <laughs> All I hear is just loving yourself is the first thing. Beautiful. Nothing else seems to matter except that. And as that being, what can I do to best love myself unconditionally? Be authentic. Don't be perfect. <laughs> Good. I know I want you to ask that being to show you an image of your best self, your highest self, your greatest good. It just see myself on this platform or stage or something just with a microphone in hand just going through the process of getting where I needed to go without any you, emotion <laughs> just and in your pocket you have a set of pencils and a pad and I want you to just draw this image in your mind, good. And when that image is finished, I want you to say out loud with conviction. I love myself and all of my flaws are perfect. I love myself and all of my flaws are perfect. And I am full of love and light. I am full of love and light. I let go of any hateful thoughts towards myself. I let go of any hateful thoughts towards myself. Good. And when you're ready, I want you to put back your drawing tools. Put that picture in your pocket. Good. And say goodbye to that being and thank them for helping. And when you see that door, go ahead and cross back through it and shut it behind you. And go ahead and take a deep breath in. Hold. And release. And go ahead and come back to your center. And when you're ready, sit up and open your eyes. Oh, that was emotional. Yeah. I uh, I kept seeing the correlation between being public and having to be perfect, having to always be perfect. And again, it goes back to like that studio, you know, like, I couldn't just get to the order of business because I didn't want the world to see me. 
I've been trying to skate through life being invisible. Mm -hmm. And that's not how it works. It's not how it works. You're also, um, you're trying to be perfect. All In your time. mind, what is perfect? But perfect doesn't really exist because we're all perfectly flawed <laughs> right which is the reason we take a body so that we can work through these things and get to that place of unconditional love yeah it's right. like it's funny because uh you know as a teacher healer you know these things but when right. it comes to actually integrating the two that's where it's like the 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 harder part it's almost like when some of the healers don't want to do shadow work where they live in just the the butterflies and the fairies land um but yet the shadow work is where the change the biggest change the biggest healing happens yeah and so i think that you're one of the first steps you can take now well i know it is is releasing that fear of not being perfect on camera that's a big fear and a big step it is it is uh, because i still i still have you know like i want to make a quick video on you know why my teeth look like they do how many people see it i don't care but i almost feel like old because some people are at this level where they notice every little thing and some people are up here like no i'm just getting the energy you know and so it's almost like part of me wants to appeal to this group and this group and everyone in between and that's okay but as long as I don't hold myself uh I don't know uh, in a negative way because of it you know I made myself right. start doing these videos even with this situation which you know I can't fix right now you know but I understand it's more of just saying you know, yeah, I'm doing it, but also I got to say, it don't matter, you know, just, just, it doesn't matter. Yeah. And I, I feel like you still hold very tightly to that fear of not being perfect or not necessarily even a fear of not being perfect, but a fear of not being aesthetically pleasing yeah. to your own expectations Yeah, and then putting those expectations on yourself. And I think that that's going to be a very large step of um, releasing. It is most definitely because I, after I hurt my knee in wrestling, as soon as I got off the, the Vyvanse ADHD meds and my life went in a different direction, um, did the shadow work, all the weight came back. And I was like, oh my God, it was so painful. Not the muscle stuff, but the, I don't know if I told you, but I had vocal cord dysfunction. So, um, what was happening was the anxiety in the ring or getting my, um, uh, what do you call it? Uh, heart rate up so high. Um, the fe fears would come up and my throat would cut off my breathing. And, and this was a new diagnosis because I thought I had a, um, exercise, um, asthma, asthmatic exercising. Turned out it wasn't, it was this vocal cord dysfunction where, somehow it ignites the the neurological system with the fears and anxieties and your body's going danger danger shut it off shut it off so I'm in the middle of the ring doing my thing and then I'm humiliated because now I can't breathe and they're all afraid I'm gonna like pass out and die in the middle of the ring so it's like okay well you know next person in come on Sue come on out and it was just humiliating and then I would have to not cry because I'm like I don't want to be the wimp here you know like I'm the girl they're all going to be looking at me they're all going to be like oh she's going to cry you know and I couldn't do that but I didn't know what was happening to me and that was a new diagnosis luckily I had a doctor that like understood new things and a lot of women have it a lot of women yeah um, 18 a lot of athletic women have it and I'm like great add that to everything else you know <laughs> But uh, right. so I got upset about gaining all that weight back and I didn't want to do the videos. I was like, no, wait till I'm skinny again or skinnier or whatever, you know, and that's never going to happen. I'm never going to be or I may, but my body is just like, no, you chose this body 
for a reason, you know, and it's going to teach me whether I like it or not, you know. And it really does. It really does. And I feel like, I feel like though, working on those fears and releasing those fears, especially in regard to perfection and um, unrealistic standards of beauty yeah are going to be kind of a starting point yeah um I mean I think that's why I wanted it was so important for me to do uh modeling or photography as I aged because I wanted that record of from when I was 22 a deer in the headlights and scared to death of being alive to oh I've grown into myself and I know it's not perfect but so I have you know a record of literally when I was 18 uh, doing nude modeling actually and not in perfect shape and then all the way to when I did the wrestling and I got myself chiseled you know my arms I, I had, was in better shape than I was in my 20s and I have a record of that you know in pictures and stuff but now I just feel like can I just rest you know what I mean like can I just I don't want to eat out of fear anymore I don't want to use food as a crutch I just want to you know be healthy Exist. be in my body and and whatever it wants to be just allow it to be without abusing it without you know punishing it for not being what I thought I was supposed to look like you know yeah I feel like you're so much closer though yeah no I I do yeah. do uh, I mean you can only kick yourself so much before you finally see yourself as full of bruises and go, okay, all right, enough. Plus, I know the healings did take a light, some layers off as far as that goes. You know what I mean? The feeling that that release of some stuff up, what do I want to put that back on? You know what I mean? So it definitely has helped. But now it's like the maintenance part. Now it's like, okay, don't let those things, you can feel them. You know how we always talk about you got to feel, but you got to let go. So me, my trick is going to be letting go. If I feel something in the old days, I attached it. I just added it onto my backpack and I was like, okay, heap it on, heap it on. And I wouldn't release myself of any of it. Now I know that it's a little scary. You know, it's like being off. I, I don't want to say like when you're, what is that? On the wagon, off the wagon. On the wagon is when you're my, you're in mindful mode you're yeah. mindful of what you're doing and that's where I have to stay you know to not go back to those self-sabotaging behaviors I guess boy I guess we're pretty good therapy huh <laughs> right I literally have never gotten more therapy in my entire life like uh, except from reading things articles learning terminology that was associated with you know um, things that I grew up with or whatever, but I've never found anybody that was able to, in fact, I don't know if I told you this, but I had one lady that was going to do EMDR tapping with me and I, I'll just be really quick, but I, I paid her some money. Um, and we were going to do our first session via phone. And then I was looking out my window and karmic twin flame walked out the house and my body just, I just started shaking. I just started like, bah! And then she's like, um, next day I got an email. I'm going to send you back your money because I'm not equipped to deal with whatever that was. You know, <laughs> Watching me fall apart right in front of her would have been an opportunity, I think, for most people to go, there it is. Let's tap it out. But it was like, wow, there's more wrong here than what I was trained for. So here's your money. Have a nice day. So it's been like that, you know, my whole life. And I guess it's because maybe... I don't know why. I'm just going to say it's in my soul contract. I don't know. <laughs> you just got to find yourself someone to get messy with. I'm really good with messy. So I love it. I love it. Oh, my God. Let's be messy. I love that. I love Let's be that. messy. Let's be imperfect. Let's be flawed. And that's a cool. Uh, okay. We're going to end this one, too. But. I don't know. Do you have time for another one? Or are you are you wiped out at this point? Because you just did a lot of healing here, or a lot of uh, stuff. I'm I'm good for one more, but then oh. after that, I'll probably have to. All right. Dip it right. Out and go. Yeah. All right. So maybe what we could do is recap and talk about some of what we did, maybe to 
show people or something, you know, tell yeah. them, explain what we did or something like that. All right. So I'll see you on.